Well, you're still watching Plus Politics and Plus TV Africa. Now, the National Security Advisor, Major General Babagana Munguno, retired on Wednesday, raised a fresh concern over the Omajiri system in the north, saying the country could no longer afford to sweep it under the carpet. Munguno, who spoke at the launch of the National Security Strategy 2019 by President Muhammad Buhari, said the Omajiri issue must be addressed as part of a solution to insecurity in the country. And I still have in the studio Dotum Alaibiwe, political analyst, Dayo Kayade, political technocrat. Uh, the issue of the Amalgari system is a very, very <laughs> sensitive issue. Um, and when talking about it, people try to walk on eggshells around it. But here is another security issue by a security advisor saying it is some form of a ticking time bomb. Have you experienced uh, or encountered any? And what were your first reactions or feelings towards these children? But you see, so many of us have been talking about this Almagiri system before now. Even the past, the past government tried as much as possible to solve the problem of Almagiri issue and you knew what happened to him then. How so many of them started talking and raking against him. Even uh, uh, Emma Sanusi, Lamido Sanusi has also tried to us solving all this uh, Almagiri issue and all that. But let me tell you this. It is a kind of a system put in place by the feudalists in the north to be able to have total control on the society. How do you mean? In terms of, one, they ensure that they are not allowed to Western education only sending them to Islamic uh, uh, schools. And even those Islamic schools they are being sent to, they are not being fought. The real tenants, the, the, the nitty gritty of, the, of, of Islam. And you know this how? Have you been to an Amadri school before? Even if I have not been, I have seen them. They, they, they don't move, they call them, they call them Magaranta how do in you, those days. How do you know that the tenets that are being taught in those schools are not the real tenets of the Islamic religion? Okay, now let me tell you this. If you go there, when you see them at that place, what they do is they just recite some aspects of the Quran all of the time. One, two, most of the time, they either send them on one errand or the other. Then three, we have also seen how they are being treated. There was one that was, that was being busted in, uh, in the north of recent. It was all over the places. Being busted, not even one, two, three. And we saw, we saw how one boy was taken there at age about three, uh, age three. And the guy now is about 21 or whatever. And he said what they were, what they were doing there is all sort of immorality. So they're missing themselves there. We saw, we saw the whole thing. So to that extent, those people are just being brought together they, they, and they are, they are always being uh, uh, amenable to be used as terrorists and all that here and there. Okay, I'll come back to you because I'm going to push you more on this uh, thing that you know about the Amadjuris. But Dr. Um, the, the, the security advisor has said that with the evolving security trends, you know, um, call, calling, there's a need for urgency, you know, to introduce methods that are different, you know, that can help to change the cause of things for these Almagiri um, children across the northern parts of the country. And one would actually think that whatever these Almagiri schools or the system was doing was in the interest of these children. Uh, you see, Almagiri is a function of federalism. Federalism is a system of government, quote-unquote, mm. designed to perpetually keep people down. You know? That is, it's, it's not a new phenomenon. So you're saying the northern part of Nigeria practices feudalism? Yes. Capital, yes. It's been, I mean, it's been there for ages now. This, it's always been like that. See, but now what I see the National Security Advisor doing is, is marrying it to the current instability in the Sahara region, you know, because, because after the fall of Gaddafi, my, oh my, 
serious arms and ammunitions were let loose coming down from that side all through to Mali and everything. See, I mean, I mean, two years ago, French troops had to come into Mali to come and contain that situation. See, that's where the light arms and weapons are coming into Nigeria. So you have a ready human resource, I mean, group or market that can be exploited for, you know, I mean. Be carrying those arms. So that's why, that's the, what I see that he's trying to call our attention to. But there are people who have said that this is, this is what religion requires. This is good. It makes you a good, you know, it's not about religion. follower. <laughs> this is what the tradition requires. I'm just saying there are people who make arguments in that regard in such a way that you would believe that really these children are getting the best that no, they, they deserve. No, they are not getting anything. See, that's what I told you. It is a function of feudalism. Designed, you know, and operated to keep people down. See, keep them in perpetual ignorance for life. Yes. So they don't know their left from their right. Mm. They say, go is go. And they can, be, they can now be used to yes. perpetrate whatever they want to do. And that is why you find out that most of the people involved in uh, Boko Haram, uh, X-Men and all that are Muslims. If you, look at the, if, you, if you look at those names, they are all Muslims. And then when you also see them, they, they, when you interview them, they don't really have that sense of understanding, all right? At, uh, but then way. all Muslims, not all Muslims, think in that direction. Because let's examine what Boko Haram wants. They're saying no to Western education. But we did speak to, some months ago, to an Islamic cler uh, cler cleric, and he, this is what he had to say about the al Majri system, and then we come back and analyze it a bit more. al Majri means a migrant or an itinerant, someone who travels from one place to the, to the other. So the reason is that in the past, you know, those, uh, the al Majri people, they are meant to travel from uh, a place or to leave their homes to another place whereby they can acquire and learn Islamic, uh, Islamic knowledge. So al Majri, the centers where they learn are known as Makaranta Allo in the Hausa. So al Muhajri is now being you know, corrupted or reduced to the word like al Majri, okay. what is originally an Arabic uh, word, well, which means okay. someone who travels to another place in order to, for any, water, any, any purpose, mm -hmm. but in this case, to acquire the Islamic, uh, Islamic knowledge. The institutions of al Majri are meant to promote Islamic or Arabic, uh, Arabic literacy. Quranic literacy for children to learn, and uh, there is a history to it. It started all the way from uh, in Borno State during the Academy Empire. So these people, the rulers, then they were people who were very knowledgeable, and they wanted. So he he was trying to just give us some background yeah, yeah. to it, and he, of course, um, said alluded to the fact that it's been bastardized. I'm sure that in Lagos traffic, you see these kids. You see, you see. You see them begging. Yeah. They're scratching on your car window. Mm. And he said they're supposed to move from one place to the other, acquiring Islamic literacy. But is that really the case? No. You see, I will still, I will still use the example of uh, Emma Sanusi, Lamido Sanusi. He went to Islamic school now. Go and read his uh, CV. He went to Islamic school. I have friends that have been to Islamic schools, but these are well-established Islamic schools. What these people are now doing is they are trying as much as possible to extort the ignorance of the parents of these children. Because from the beginning, the parents already have been exploited. All right? The parents have been, have been subjected to the lowest ebb of thinking faculty. All right, so they now encourage them to be breathing anyhow. And that's why you will see a 15 year old girl like that within there will have given birth to about three children. Okay. Do you understand? Okay. So they will now take all those children from them and say they are teaching them Islamic. What, what Islamic are they teaching them? They are only keeping them down okay. to, further, to further their okay. exploitation. Um, before I go to my next break, um, Doctor, why do you think that this has been bastardized? He, he made a, he made an, an assertion saying these there are very very 
well-known Nigerians who have gone to good Arabic schools and it didn't affect the, how they turned out. But how come the one in Nigeria seems to be having the problem? Is, this, is it an indoctrination of sorts? What exactly do you think the problem is? So, see, we're mixing it up. al Majiri, like that guy told you, is like an itinerant human being mm -hmm. that's going to move from one place to the other for whatever purposes. An established Islamic school is more like a secondary school, I mean, a university or whatever. So mm -hmm. they are two different things. Like that. So I, my take is al Majeris don't go to Islamic schools. Uh -huh. They just stay under, you know, the control of one person. Mm. And then, I mean, he dishes out what he likes to them. Uh -huh. that's, that's oh, different. sorry, sorry. Mm -mm. It's like this. Just like you have public schools and private schools. So also, is this well-established Islamic schools and the one you are talking the about. Mushroom. Do you understand? That is, it's just like that. Okay. If you go to, if you go and meet people that have gone to, there was a guy I was chatting with just now. He, he went to Islamic school now, and he later, he later ended up having MSc in geography. That's, that's what I was saying. Do you, you see, understand? Established Islamic schools are like so, universities. So those ones, those ones that are, uh, are, are privately owned, uh, Mangaranta, they are the one that they take those people they want to exploit to. So they don't take, they don't take the children of well-educated to such places. They take those people that they have exploited. Okay, okay. They take their children there. Even when they get there too, they see born and still live there. Okay. I was in Kaduna State uh, earlier this year before the general elections and I spoke with the governor of Kaduna State and one of my questions to him was, what he was doing about the Amadjuris, taking them off the street and giving them an education, and this is what he had to say. The issue of Amadjuris in, I'm sure, the whole of Nigeria, you see them everywhere. I was just saying, in my state, Kostrova, you see them everywhere in traffic, in River State. But when we got into the state yesterday, I couldn't see one, not one. What did your state do? What was the magic? Maybe other states' well, governments need to follow suit. Yeah, well, we have Amadjuris. Maybe you didn't see them. Uh, maybe you are lucky you didn't see any yesterday. But we do have them. They have gone down in number. Uh, we have done two or three things, okay? The first was that we made primary, junior, secondary education totally and absolutely free. You don't pay anything. And with that, we now said to parents that your child must go to school. Okay, for girls, we have made junior secondary school and senior secondary school free. So for girls, you have 12 years of free education. For boys, nine years of free education. Now, if education is free, no one has any excuse not to send his child to school. So having put that policy in place, we did a lot of advocacy, and we saw primary school enrollment move from 1.1 million to 2.1 million. Okay. The second thing we did is that we, we enacted a law to prohibit street hawking and begging. Okay. We, don't, we, we have not enforced it vigorously because we don't have enough classrooms to take every child in Kaduna that wants to go to school. I've explained to you earlier yeah. that our classrooms are congested and we need to build out classrooms. And we brought in an NGO called Edu Marshall, where they, they are education marshals. They go around streets and when they see a child not in school during school hours, they take the child to take them to his parents and they preach to the parents and take him straight to school because it's free. It doesn't cost the parent anything. Okay, so this may explain why we have a lower number of al in Kaduna State than in other uh, states in the north. A lot of people might not be fans of El Rafai, but mm. he seemed to have been able to, uh, you know, reduce the number because sincerely we hardly saw these children on the streets. But in Lagos, you see them everywhere. I'm sure if you go to, I mean, in River State, it's a mess. And in several, they're spread all over. We know that they're supposed to move, but... There, these children could be exposed to all kinds of dangers. Now, you guys have one minute each, so I'll start with you, Dotson. Um, national security is the issue here. Boko Haram is on the prowl. We have the herders. All kinds of terror. We have ISWAP. How do we make sure that these children do not become a tool in the hands of these terrorists? Just like um, El Rufai just said now, education is key and social security. If you give them free education and give them, I mean, a certain level of comfortability in life, I mean, you're going to win them off 
you know, deviance. But then you still have to appeal to the sensibilities of their parents who may also be stuck in the past. How do you do that? That's always orientation. You see, you see, boys and education. You need to let the parents see, you know, the advantage of allowing the child to toe this path as opposed to going in this, in this direction. Interesting. And finally, yeah, I see you were reading my mind. I'm never a fan of uh, air fire, no doubt about it. But with this, he has said, I wish he would be able to walk the talk. All right. Then, secondly, you don't really need unnecessary sensitization of the appearance. Really? In Yoruba, there's what they call Ojulo Mankoto Yonu. If they put food in front, in, in front of you now, you will know whether this one will be okay for you or not. Do you understand? So the moment you are giving them a very good... But don't forget, we also live in a society where we hold on to our past much more than the future. It's difficult for us to open yes. up our hands well, and embrace the future. What I'm saying... Because I, it is not something that we're used to. And that, How do you break I, that And that cycle? is what I said. That is what I said. You, that in the morning, probably the, you were being given two slices of bread and you were not okay. If tomorrow comes, you are being given five, you know that you will be okay. The moment the, moment the, the parents of these children are seeing the facilities on ground for them, then they have no option than to, than to listen to them. And then, because they know that these children will not now be as they look at, look at so many mechanics, look at some guru sending their children to school now. Because they know the essence of education. Well, gentlemen, we have to go. I want to say thank you to my guest, Dr. <laughs> Alayi Bigbe. He's a political analyst. Of course, Dr. Dyer Kayade, thank you very much. He's a political technocrat. It's been a very interesting conversation. But before we go, here's my take. Now, the DSS has raised an alarm about protests and pockets of violence that may disrupt our Yuletide celebrations. But could this also be a coded way of saying no more protests? Again, the job of security is everyone's business, but should these intel be made public? Because again, how can you tell if this is not going to bring some form of fear on the hearts of every Nigerian? Are the DSS trying to scare us as opposed to making us feel safe? Well, be aware of strange movements in your area. It's very important. Report suspicious movements or persons around your vicinity. Security is everybody's business. And Children are our future. We have always heard this. We're supposed to protect love and care for them. They are a gift, but yet some people think it's okay to enslave them, reverse roles, make them work instead of taking responsibility. Now, these kids are exposed to all sorts, rape, kidnapping, recruitment into gangs, or even used as weapons of terrorism. So government, Nigeria's government, governments across boards need to rise up and begin to live up to their responsibility before it is too late. I am Mary Anacone, and it's been Plus Politics.